Hi, this is Christy Burcham with Scissortail Studio. In this video, I'm going to show you how to digitize your own embroidered keychain. This is the example, and this is a set of keychains that I made for my mother-in-law for her school for uh, gifts for her coworkers. And you can see here we uh, digitized the logo of the school and stitched out on a keychain with a satin stitch finish. And what makes these keychains really nice is that the back side is covered when we finish the project. So I want to show you the steps to digitize your own keychain that you can customize and personalize um, and that will have this covered back on it. On our uh, website, on our blog, we actually have the step-by-step -step instructions for how to stitch out this project and you can follow that as a guide to help you in planning your design and also so you'll know how to stitch it out once you've digitized the design. So let's open up our embroidery software and we will begin digitizing this design. When I open up my embroidery software, um, I'm using the Bernina Embroidery Digitizing Software. Um, this is version 6, and I um, have my hoop put up on my screen. So I've got my hoop size already showing on my screen. This will make it a lot easier for me to plan my designs, as I want to have a design that is um, going to fit multiples of these in one hoop. So I want to see that hoop as I'm working. Now on the blog post, the five steps for the stitching out the design are listed and those are the five steps we also need to digitize. So the first step is creating a placement line which allows us to place our base fabric onto a tearaway stabilizer. So we're actually going to be applicating that base fabric onto the stabilizer and when we're done we'll just tear it out. Um, the second stitch will be a tack down that's going to hold that uh, applique in place. The third step will be our embroidery design. Now this third step might be multiple colors, but whatever design, colors are in your design, that's the third step. And then after we do the embroidery design, we do another tack down, and this is actually to hold the back fabric in place. And if you uh, visit the blog, you'll see uh, photos of how you do this. You actually are going to stitch out the design, and then after you finish all of the embroidery, you remove the hoop from the machine, and you place the backing fabric onto the back of the embroidery hoop, and then we tack it down with that tack down stitch. And then finally, the last step is the finishing satin stitch outline, and we also will then create an uh, eyelet to be able to um, have a hole punch for our keychain to go into. So let's get started. You can do these uh, designs in just about any size that you want, um, but my recommendation is you do something somewhere in the neighborhood of three inches by four inches or a little smaller. Um, any bigger than that, and it's really too big for a keychain. Um, and any smaller, and it's difficult to get something that's big enough to put a design um, on it that you can really see. So somewhere in the neighborhood of three inches by four inches. The first thing you have to do when you decide how to make these designs is what shape you want that keychain to be. While you can do just about any shape you want, you could do a heart or a star, um, the simpler the shape, the easier it will be to create the designs. So when I created mine, I chose a simple oval. This allows me to easily cut out the applique pieces and it makes the process uh, pretty simple. Um, so let's do a simple oval. We are going to choose an outline stitch type um, and we want a single stitch because this is just a placement line. So we're just using this as a guide. We don't need any special stitches, just an outline stitch to show us where we need to go. And then we will choose the circle or oval tool to create our oval. If your embroidery software does not have an oval tool, you could manually digitize an oval, but fortunately we have an easy to use oval tool here. So we'll select our circle and I simply click once to start my circle or oval. Then I drag it out to the width I want that oval to be and click once to set it. And then I drag the other direction to make the height that I want it to be and click once to set it. And then touch enter and that creates my finished oval. Now I've got this oval, let's see how big I made it. It's about 2.2 wide by 3.39 high. Let's make that just a little bit bigger. Somewhere in the neighborhood of two and a half by three and three quarters inches. It's about the size that we want. Now, let's go ahead and make the other uh, designs for the same hoop. As I said, we want to try to get multiples of these in one hoop. 
So I've already got the oval. Let's go ahead and copy and paste this. So we're going to say edit, copy, and edit, paste. You could also use your control C, control V functions. And then we can do the same thing. I'll use control C, control V to copy and paste and paste again so that we have all four of these. Now you'll want to get these so that they fit within the hoop. We don't want anything sticking out there. And I can see that mine is actually going to be a little bit too big, so I'm going to size these down just a little bit. There we go. Okay, now One other thing I want to do before I move on, if you really want to, it's not going to matter in the long run, but if you really want to, you can line these up and make them perfectly aligned, or you can even use your alignment tools to get them perfectly aligned. But remember that you're stitching them onto stabilizer, and um, so therefore it doesn't really matter if they're perfectly aligned because you're going to punch them out when you're done anyway. However, one little detail that will make this sewing process a lot easier. When we added these designs, if you'll notice, they start and end here because you can see the jump stitches moving across from point to point. So all of them are starting and ending on this center right section and then it's jumping across. What's going to happen though, unfortunately, because of the way this is done, is when we go to the next color change, this is going to end up trapped under our design which means we would have to trim this before the second next color change um, or else we're going to have a thread trapped underneath our embroidery. So if we want to save ourselves our, some trouble, especially if you'll be doing this design multiple times, we want to change the start and end points of this. And to do that, we simply select our oval and we choose our reshape object tool or if you have a different software, it might be called a different tool. But we want to choose the tool that allows us to set the start and end points of our design. So that's called reshape object in this Bernina embroidery software. So the red and green are my start and end points. And now we can see over here, I can move the start and end points. And I'm just moving all of them toward the center. And what this will allow us to do is it's going to make it such that these jump stitches are all in the center of the hoop and they're not overlapping any of the embroidered areas. So we don't have to trim those in between the color changes. We can trim them all when we're done. So that just makes everything a little bit neater. Okay, now we've done our tack down. If you wanted to, you could um, digitize the entire keychain, all the steps, and then copy and paste it to get multiples in the hoop. The reason I'm doing it the way I am is I want all of the placement lines together and then when I get to the tack downs I want all of those together and so on. And even though I could rearrange them when I'm done, I find when I digitize the more I can plan ahead and do the steps in the order I'm actually going to stitch them, uh, the less trouble and time I'll have in trying to go back and fix it at the end. So we've got this placement stitch. We're going to actually select everything. So I use a control A on the keyboard for select all. And we're going to copy all four of these and paste them. And we want to now create the tack down that's going to hold the applique in place. So we still want it to be an outline, but instead of a single stitch outline, we're going to change it to a zigzag or satin stitch outline. We also want to be sure to change the color. It's very important you change the color. If you don't, the machine will not stop. So even though you have separate objects there, the machine won't know that you want to stop at that point. So you must change the color even if you're not actually going to change the color of your thread on your machine. So we've got that uh, second color with four ovals and now we want to um, right click that to get our object properties and change our stitch type from single to satin. Now we don't want a full satin here because we're just going to use this to tack the fabric down. So it can be a, a wider uh, satin where there's more space in between each satin stitch. So we'll change the type to manual so that we can change this stitch spacing from the default which is 0.4 which would be a full cover satin to 2.0 which is going to be a wider zigzag stitch. Okay, we're going to leave the offset at the center 
so you can see that the zigzag is going to go exactly centered which will be perfect for us because that will center it over our placement stitch. And we'll leave the satin width at point 1 and click apply and say OK. So now we have our placement stitch and we have our zigzag stitch and we're ready now to add our embroidery design. So whatever we want to embroider in the center of these keychains. Now, just for the sake of time, I'm not going to digitize uh, anything special. I'm just going to put my name in, uh, in these keychains. So I'm going to use the font, type in my name, and I'll rotate that. And we'll change the font here. Okay, let's choose a prettier font. There's lots of fonts built into the software, and I also love that you can actually uh, convert true type fonts uh, to embroidery as well. Okay, let's just choose this one and click apply and okay. Now, if we were digitizing something, we would want, if we wanted more than one of the same, we could copy and paste them into each of these ovals. Or, if I wanted to create one for a friend, I could copy and paste and change the name. And so now I could actually make multiple keychains that were slightly different, all in the same hoop. and so on. We just want to center each of these within our hoop. Now you can do this just visually or if you wanted to you could also use your alignment tools to get these perfectly centered in each hoop. Okay so now I've got my designs in the center of each keychain and once I've done that and I'm happy with how those keychains are going to look, now I can add the satin, uh, the tack down for the backing fabric. So we've added um, the placement line, we've added the tack down for the uh, base fabric, the embroidery has now been added, um, and then we want to add the tack down to add the backing fabric. So remember at this point we are going to, actually we've stitched uh, the embroidery designs, we will be removing the design from the, the hoop from the machine, but leaving the uh, hoop, the fabric in the hoop, and then we'll be flipping it over, putting another piece of fabric that we've already pre-cut into, uh, onto the back of this. And then we'll replace it on the hoop, and we want another tack down. So the good news about that other tack down is it can be exactly the same as the second one. So I've just selected that um, yellow tack down. I'm going to copy it, use Control C there, and then paste it. And because we did it after our embroidery designs, we don't have to change the color, but I like to anyway just to be sure that we're going to have a separate color change for that tack down. Now we're ready for the finish, which is the satin stitch. Now the satin stitch is also the same shape as the tack down, so we can copy that, we can paste it, we can of course change the color, very important to change that color, and now we want to change the settings of this because we want this to be a full satin as opposed to that wider satin. So we want to switch our stitch spacing back from 2.0 to 0.4 and I'm also going to increase the width a little bit just to 0.13 and this is going to make that satin stitch just a bit more substantial and also make sure that it's wider than our tack down that way we'll be sure that the tack down isn't going to show and we'll click apply and OK and you can see that we've got that lovely satin stitch now ready to finish the design. Now the very last step that we need to do is to add our um, eyelets. So we're again going to use our circle tool 
but this time we are going to choose a satin type and we're going to do an actual circle. So I want my eyelet hole to go right about here. I'm going to click once for the center, click once for the size, and then touch enter to set it in place. We want those eyelets to be the same color as our um, finished satin stitch edge. And once you've got one of them, you can copy and paste that using your control C and control V. Whoops, stretched it instead of dragged it there. And just put one of those in each of your keychains. If you again want to use your alignment tools to, put, to make sure they're exactly perfect, you can do so. Um, but I just eyeball it here. Now one thing we do want to do is just to make sure that we make this in such a way that that eyelet is big enough to actually cut an eyelet into. So you may want to zoom in on that eyelet and then I'm going to just touch M on my keyboard. This is a measure tool and this allows me to click in here and that just tells me that that is about a tenth of an inch between those two points so then I know that it's big enough to cut a hole. Um, if you don't cut the hole big enough you'll you'll find out after you stitch the first one. Um, when you go to actually stitch these out you can poke a hole with your scissors or you can use an eyelet punch if you have one available uh, which is even more convenient. Okay now this design is actually ready for us to send to our machine and sew. Um, if we wanted to we could do a little bit more cleanup as far as where these jump stitches are just to make sure uh, and save ourselves some time make sure that nothing is trapped under anything else. Um, but if we're ready we could actually go ahead and stitch these out and we would save them to our machine ready to stitch. Now before we stitch them out it will be helpful for us to actually print the placement lines and by printing the placement lines at the full size this will make it easy for us to pre-cut all the applique pieces this way we can have them cut ahead of time so to do that we're just going to copy that so I've got that placement stitch selected I'm copying it using control C on the keyboard going to a new uh, embroidery design and pasting in those ovals and let's show all and now I'm going to print this. I don't even have to save that I just need to print them out and this will give us the pattern we need to stitch out those uh, keychain designs. So uh, I hope you've learned um, some things here in learning how to digitize these keychains. Um, they really make a very quick and easy project to stitch out and they make a great last minute gift or a gift tag, um, something just quick and fun you can do with your embroidery machine. If you have any questions about how to digitize this design, how to stitch it out, or any other questions that you'd like to see in one of our videos, um, just leave a message below and we'll be happy to respond to your comment or visit us at scissortailstudio.com and leave us a message there. Thanks so much for watching.